good evening, People's Church Newton Abbey. It's Pastor McKim here with the call to prayer. As you can see, I'm sitting in the sanctuary. We're getting closer, and we're getting closer to the opening, and hopefully, sooner rather than later, we'll be back in the sanctuary, house of God, worshiping the Lord together, all of us together, in the name of Jesus. Hope you had a good weekend. I know that we had a brilliant Lord's Day, two packed uh, services in the drive-in at 10 and 11.30. Fantastic response also. People phoned throughout the province. And also we want to thank you for your texts and your WhatsApps. We truly appreciate your support and we're grateful for it. Um, and also last night with a gospel service with Pastor John. Brilliant. Loved it. Brother and sister, God is blessing us here and we are forever grateful and we're always looking for progress. We're always looking to go that step further, closer to getting in to the sanctuary. But in the meantime, I have to say this with all honesty, God has blessed those drive-in services, those in the car park, absolutely. God has blessed, honestly, it's amazing what's going on there. And honestly, people are being blessed, inspired and encouraged. And long may they continue until the restrictions are completely lifted and we can all come in together. That's hopefully sooner rather, rather than later. Let me say it again. That's hopefully sooner rather than later. But this is the call to prayer. Now yesterday we broke bread and remembered the Lord in our cars and online. Last night we heard the gospel through Pastor John's gospel message. And tonight it's the call to prayer. Just before we get down to prayer, we want to do a wee devotion, and it's found in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26. And it's a famous chapter, and it's a famous place, the Garden of Gethsemane, and most of all, it's a famous person. So turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26, okay? And just while you're getting it, happy birthday to Judith Crooks, she's 40 this week. Also, Andrew, Christine's son, big Andrew, it's his birthday, and also Margaret Kelly is celebrating her 80th birthday this week. So congratulations, happy birthday to all of you together. May you have a brilliant day and a great birthday. Amen. Come on, let's look at God's word tonight. Let's begin to read from verse 36. Then Jesus came with them to the, a place called Gethsemane. Don't forget Gethsemane, the place, the crushing press. Okay, and said to the disciples, sit here while I go and pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. So he's asking for help here and assistance in prayer. He went a little farther and fell on his face. Boy, this is intensity here. And prayed saying, Oh my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. It's hard to believe, isn't it? And said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And that's for all of us. The spirit is willing. Yes, I've had people pastoring behind you. They are, but you never see them now. They were willing. Spirit was willing, but the flesh was weak. Again, a second time he went away and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. And he came and found them asleep again. Dear love the Lord Jesus. He found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away again and prayed the third time. Listen, saying the same words. Don't forget that. Remember that. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand. And the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer 
is at hand. And while he was still speaking, behold, Judas, one of the twelve, and a great multitude with him, with swords and clubs, came from the chief priests and elders of the people. Notice Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. Here's a question. How did Jesus, I've always asked myself, how did Jesus face the biggest ordeal in his life? Answer, he prayed his way through it. He prayed his way through it. What do you do in the biggest crises of your life or your ordeals? I hope and pray that you'll do what Jesus did. That's what I do. I've always found the answer is prayer and praying through. In fact, he prayed his way through everything. I want you to notice in verse 36 to 38, the pressure he was under. Verse 39, the prayer and prayers he offered. Verse 40 and 42, the persistence he showed. And verse 43 and verse 44, the perseverance he endured. And verse 44 and 45, the peace that he received. Simple wee thoughts, but I just want to leave them with you. The pressure he was under. You need to think about this. He's about to go to the cross with all its horrors. The cross, the suffering. So he leaves the upper room and heads to the Garden of Gethsemane. The Garden of Crushing. The Garden of Crushing. He's one thing on his mind. One thing is absolutely critical to the Lord Jesus. That one thing is prayer. This is the call to prayer tonight. And I'm calling you to join me in prayer. It's critical, it's, a, it's essential, and it's absolutely vital. Notice the one thing was prayer. The prayers, number two, the prayers he offered. In Matthew 26, verse 36 to 46, these 10 verses depict to me the praying Christ. Thank God he's the example for us to follow. He enters an intense time of powerful prayer. William Barclay, the beloved heretic, he said we should approach this passage on our knees. Verse 36, he says to his disciples, look, sit here while I go and pray over there. He is so willing to go and pray. He wants to get into prayer. He takes Peter and John and James with him. And he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed, a term meaning affected by grief, pressed down, crushed, or overwhelmed. And what's ahead of him begins to grip him, the anguish, the pain, the suffering, the rejection. And in verse 38, he says to them again, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even on the death. There's a crushing weight Fear, dread, the cross is looming and it's getting closer. The pains of death are actually taking hold of him. So in verse 38 he says, stay here and watch with me. He's looking, he's asking for help, support, assistance, prayer support, prayer help, prayer assistance. He says, watch with me. In other words, stay awake with me. Stay with me in prayer. Pray with me. Watch and pray. And then we see again the persistence that he showed. Verse 39, he went a little farther. I have to say that sometimes to get breakthrough, we've got to go a little farther. Brother and sister, are you willing to go that little farther to get breakthrough in answer to your prayers? Notice, he goes a little farther and then he falls on his face. He's deep in prayer here. There's stress here. There's burdens here. Yes, he's, he's on his face. He falls on his face. He's feeling the pressure, the strain, the battle is raging. Prostrate his face to the ground, he begins to pray again. Oh, my father, he's talking to his father. Oh, my father, or Abba, father, if it is possible. He's feeling it. If it is possible, let this cup pass from me. The weight is unbearable. The grief overwhelming. Brother and sister, the sorrow is frightening and the burden is continually crushing. The Lord Jesus thought he was going to die in Gethsemane's garden, 
not at Calvary. That's how intense this time of prayer was for him. Brother and sister, he says, my father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. He's crying again. He realizes the intensity here. And he says, my father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, here's the answer. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And then in verse 40, he comes back to find the disciples sleep. He's coming back from the intense prayer, the battle on his knees, on his face, on the ground. He's totally focused. He's totally into praying and seeking the Father's will. And he comes back to the disciples and he finds them sleeping. You know, this never ceases to amaze me. Jesus is facing the greatest ordeal or crisis in his life. He needs prayer support. He needs especially their prayers, yet he finds them sleeping. I call it the praying Christ and the sleeping church. Brother and sister, watch and pray. Don't fall asleep. He says to Peter, he addresses Peter because literally minutes earlier, Peter vows his total loyalty to Jesus. I'll go to prison with you. I'll never leave you. I'll even die with you. Brother and sister, what does he say? Peter, what? Could you not watch with me? One hour. You were going to do all sorts of things literally minutes ago. And now you fell asleep. You can almost feel the disappointment in our Lord's words. I'm sure the thought of them sleeping while he was agonizing in prayer must have caused him more grief and added to his sorrow. You vowed you'd be there for me. You vowed to go to prison with me. You vowed to even die with me, Peter. Peter, you can't even stay awake for a few minutes. You can't even pray with me for an hour, but you're sleeping. The disappointment is there. You can hear it in the voice of the Lord Jesus. You can hear it in his words. Verse 41. And that's why he says, watch. Watch and pray. Lest you enter temptation. Yes, the spirit indeed is willing. But the flesh is weak. He knew them. He knew all about the disciples. He knew them inside out. And he knew their willingness. Sadly, he also knew their weaknesses. And do you know, brothers and sisters, he knows our willingness. And he also knows our weakness. For all their good intentions, and that's a sad thing, for all their good intentions, they weren't there when he needed them most. They weren't there when, they, when he needed them most. But you know something? It did not stop him from pressing on through prayer. Notice the perseverance that he endured. Verse 42, he goes back and prays a second time. Oh, Father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. He's repeating the first prayer. He's praying it again. He says, oh, my, oh Father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. He's totally submitted. He's completely surrendered. And he's absolutely devoted to the Father's will, the will of God. He's surrendering and he's devoted to it. He's submitted to it. He returns. And lo and behold, the disciples are sleeping again because their eyes were heavy. Do you know, that tells me something. They couldn't keep up with Jesus in prayer. That's, he knew how to pray. And they couldn't keep up with him. The cap falling asleep. But notice the peace he, he received. In verse 44, so without rebuking them, brothers and sisters, he turns and he goes back to pray a third time. Did you hear that? And notice what it says. Listen, saying the same words. He went back to pray a third time, saying the same words. Remember that statement. And, and he says to them, Behold, the hour is at hand. Are you sleeping? Are you resting? Behold, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. My betrayer is at hand. In other words, it's over. I've prayed through. I'm ready to face 
whatever comes my way, and he's right here coming towards me. Judas and the mob are coming for him. Yes, he prayed, brothers and sisters. He prayed and he prayed and he prayed through to victory. Do you know, there's a battle goes on in the prayer life. There's a battle goes on in the prayer closet. There's a battle goes on in your prayer life. Brother and sister, that's why he said, men ought always to pray and not faint or lose heart or quit. Another translation says, pray until the answer comes. He can face anything now. He can face anyone now because he's prayed through. That's the power of prayer. I'm calling you tonight to the call to prayer. And there's power in your prayer. There's power in your prayers. People's church need not be. There's power in our prayers. We want to be a praying church. People phone in and text in all week with needs to be prayed for, people to be prayed for. Thank God they know where to come because we pray and we want God to move in a powerful way and answer their prayers. Yes, he's ready and he's waiting. I and he's willing to do his father's will. Yes, they may betray him. They may arrest him, but he's already prayed through to victory and he's ready to face whatever comes. Do you know, as I close, there's one last point that I want to leave you with. In verse 44, it says, So he left them, went away again, and prayed the same words. I want you to notice that. He went away again and prayed, saying the same words. You know, three times Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane here. Three times he prayed the same words. Three times he prayed the same thing. Three times he prayed for the same burden that he was carrying. Does that remind you of somebody? I know it reminds me of me. We feel guilty sometimes about repeating our prayers. We condemn ourselves because we pray the same words. But can I say some encouragement for you? Jesus did it too. He prayed three times saying the same words. You see, he was troubled about one particular thing and he didn't stop praying about it until he prayed it through. Oh boy, what an, ex what an example. What an inspiration. He was praying the burden off. He was casting his care and his burden upon the Lord the Father. The pastor, someone said, Matthew chapter 6 says not to be repetitive or use repetitions in prayer. Hold it, brother and sister. It doesn't say that. Jesus said not to use vain repetitions or empty, meaningless, thoughtless chanting. There's a difference. There's a difference. And Jesus is showing us here the difference. He prayed three times saying the same words. Yes, he prayed saying the same words. He prayed and he prayed more earnestly and he prayed the third time and every time he prayed the same thing. He prayed specifically. He prayed persistently. He prayed perseveringly until the answer came. He prayed the same words, not out of habit, but out of conviction, out of burden. He couldn't stop until his burden lifted and his answer came. That's high to get answers to your prayers. Praying and praying and praying the same thing until it lifts and the victory comes. Brother and sister, don't stop. Don't stop praying until the answer comes. Until the burden lifts. And you know when it lifts and you know when the answer comes. I know I do. And you know when the breakthrough happens. Something lifts, lifts. You get a peace. Remember Elijah on Mount Carmel? He prayed the same thing seven times. Seven times. On the seven, the same seventh prayer, a little cloud appeared and the answer arrived. 
every day, every day in my life, I pray saying the same words. I can't help it. They just come naturally and God hears them every day. I'm like the importunate, importunate widow with the unjust judge. I'm just gnawing away there. I'm just nipping his ear. Brothers and sisters, I'm like the neighbor's night caller who wanted some loaves of bread for his family. He wouldn't stop because his persistence got him the answer. And I'm like the distraught father or mother who came to Jesus for their possessed son or sick daughter. They wouldn't leave without an answer and they got what they prayed for. They got what they asked for. Brothers and sisters, they got their prayers answered. Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. Do you know what the word actually means? It means this, ask, 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 ask. In other words, ask and keep asking, keep asking until you receive what you've asked for. Seek I and keep seeking until you find what you've prayed for. Knock and keep knocking until it's opened onto you and your prayers are answered. Brothers and sisters, do you know what I love about this? The Lord Jesus went to pray. He went to prayer. He brought his disciples with him to pray and help him and support him. He prayed. They fell asleep. He prayed again. They fell asleep again. He prayed for the third time, saying the same words. They were still sleeping while he was still praying. And even though they let him down, they were still his disciples. Even though they fell asleep, they were still his disciples. Even though they failed him miserably, even when he needed them most and they weren't, were sleeping, they were still his disciples. And he loved them unto the end. Tonight, his disciples, us, still feel him, but we're still his disciples. And he's told us to watch and pray. So come on, let's do that right now. There's plenty to pray about, brothers and sisters, plenty. We have a list of names that will come up at the end of this uh, little broadcast. But we want to pray. Let's pray for Edwin Poots as he takes charge of his new leadership role. Let's pray for the right First Minister for Northern Ireland to stand with Michelle O'Neill. Let's pray for them both. Let's also pray for Stormont, that the Lord will help Stormont to do the right things for the people of Northern Ireland. Let's pray also for Boris Johnson, I and Westminster, that they'll do the right things for Northern Ireland too. So let's pray. Let's pray for the churches in our province, that the Lord will bless them, yes, and that the restrictions will be lifted completely. I think on the 24th, there's going to be more restrictions lifted again. People can meet outside, especially these youth clubs and stuff like that. So praise the Lord, things are looking forward, and we can see things unfolding before our very eyes. So come on, the best thing we can do tonight is pray. So will you help me? Will you get behind me? Listen. Will you watch and pray with me? And then I'll pray with you and watch with you. Father, we come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus tonight, thanking you for the wonderful weekend that we have had. Thank you for last week for allowing me to pray with that sister to come back to the Lord over the phone. Thank you, Lord, that she just needed you to, just to restore her joy, to restore her salvation. And Lord, we pray tonight that she's going on with Jesus. Lord, we ask you, Lord, for that list of people, the brothers and sisters, even folks we don't even know, on our list. Lord, will you heal them? Will you touch them? Lord, every one of them is precious. We don't want to mention someone and leave somebody else out. So every one of them, the spoken and the unspoken requests, Father, will you meet them at the very point of their greatest needs? And Lord, will you answer their prayers? We we'll ask you for answered prayer. Lord, we're not giving up. We're praying and we're praying and we're praying right through until the answer comes. Help us, Lord, to, to persevere and persist 
in our prayers, Lord. As we ask and keep asking, as we seek and keep seeking, as we knock and keep knocking, Lord, we know, we know, Lord, that you're not a disappointment and we know the answer will come. So, Father, will you bless tonight? Bless all the churches in Northern Ireland, Lord. Bless the churches in the Republic, in Scotland, England, and Wales, Lord, in the nation. We pray, Lord, bring this nation back to you. Lord, bring our province back to you in revival fashion. We pray, Lord, that they'll lift the restrictions, and we're praying that we'll get in into the sanctuary, Lord, worshiping together, Lord. No social distancing. No anything, Lord, just coming together and worshiping the Lord in the house of God with the people of God in the presence of God. Oh, Lord, we long for that day. But, Lord, in the meantime, will you bless the drive-ins, Lord? You are. Will you continue to bless them, Lord? And will you continue to bring new people every week? Thank you for the new people yesterday again. We're praising you, Lord, and we're thanking you for two full car parks. Now, Lord, we're praying. We're praying for the messages online. Thank you for those phone calls that we received yesterday. People watching around the province, people watching around the nation. So we thank you for that, Lord. But we're asking you, Lord, will you save souls again? Will you restore the prodigals again? Lord, will you heal the sick again? Will you set the captives free again? Lord, will you glorify your name again? And Lord, will you answer prayers again? Oh, Father, we ask all of these things tonight in the lovely name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's great to be in the sanctuary. Brothers and sisters, hopefully you'll be with me and we'll worship the Lord together in his house sooner rather than later. But listen, stay focused, stay patient, and stay faithful coming to the drive-in because God is using them for his honor and glory to the glory of God. Amen. And by the way, by the way, can I just say, as I reminded yesterday, we've cleaned the place. This all has been washed and cleaned. We've also, we've to fix a leak on the roof and also we've to do one or two things, tidy up the toilets and stuff like that. And also we've to get a new boiler for the heat, the crash and the craft room because there's no heat there, the, the radios are no use. So we wanna, we wanna try and get everything ready, uh, like a paint here and a like a paint there. We wanna get ready for our grand opening back in the People's Church Newton Abbey Sanctuary. Praise God, we're looking forward to it. Please, thank you for your support. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for your help. And most of all, thank you for your prayers. Have a great week. Don't forget, phone Kelly and boot your car space for Wednesday night. It was packed last Wednesday. Listen, get your name down, get your car space booked, and we'll see you on Wednesday. And if you can't make these drive-ins and you're, you're isolating at home or maybe housebound, God bless you. And listen, now that I've stopped, you pray at home as well because your prayers are vital as well because we're doing this together. Let's pray together. And that's received the answers together as well. So God bless you.